the USDA would say that I'm not smart enough to make the decisions for myself about what to put in my mouth, so I need the government to do that for me. And I have a fundamental belief that humans have the right to choose for themselves how they want to medicate and with what substances they need to. Whether you're cultivating vegetables or you're cultivating cannabis, you know, to me the idea that I would somehow separate the medicinal value of my broccoli from my cannabis is absurd. We're gonna go ahead and, and get started here. My name is Casey O'Neill, I am a farmer. I co-operate Happy Day Farms, and I am the board chair for California Growers Association. We are a trade association representing cannabis industry participants all over the state. The goal is to be able to hold a vessel to have this conversation and figure out what are effective regulations and how can we apply them to this industry so that the policymakers and regulators understand where it is we're coming from, what the picture of our farms looks like, and what we're gonna need to be able to make this transition. The cannabis industry is changing in 2016 because we've seen passage of the MMRSA regulation. Which is now called the Medical Marijuana Regulation and Safety Act. Regulations are going to affect all cannabis farmers in, in very impactful ways. The MMRSA was not the end, it was the beginning. One of our key points in the last year was to see regulation for cultivation evolve underneath the Department of Agriculture with cannabis listed as a crop. The fact that the state has passed robust regulations now gives us the ability to have a different set of conversations than we were able to prior to this. With status as a crop listing, it's, it's an agricultural commodity is what it's listed as. Being an agricultural commodity is a huge transition. Up until now, if it's not a crop, it can't be regulated like crops. And so with that status, we can now develop pesticide control procedures. We can start to have a conversation about co-ops and how farmers might organize to represent within the marketplace. This sort of idea would be that the smallest farms who are in this cottage industry program would work together through the cooperative. The cooperative would hold essentially a basket of services. SB 420 gave us the collective and the cooperative model under California law, but the agricultural cooperative is a different title and heading that can only come underneath the Department of Agriculture with a crop. What I sort of envision is this idea of the cooperative and we're working to clarify the language to make sure that agricultural cooperatives are specifically authorized. We're trying to develop and write the playbook right now. Nobody knows what a cooperative for cannabis farmers looks like. This is um, very much new ground in which we are trying to say, listen, farmers of all stripes have always been given access to co-ops to work together to bring their product to market because that's sort of the answer for small farms to corporations. And so for the small farms of the cannabis industry, without the cooperative model, we are going to be swept aside by the corporations. For us here in Cali, because we do have this vast system of cultivation already happening on the ground, how do we build an interface that honors and sustains that? It's a mixed bag. Regulation is hard. There's a lot of hoops to jump through, and it's going to be difficult and expensive. I mean, you're going to get $100,000 at least out of this room, maybe $250,000 out of each room, and you go all over the county. You guys are getting millions and millions of dollars. What are you spending it on? That's a fair question. We don't set fees. Fees are set by the state board in Sacramento, and there's a fee branch. It's got to be taxed, it's got to be stamped, it needs to be part of a system of production that is legitimized. All of these things are um, of utmost importance in a regulated economy and have often been overlooked in an unregulated one. There's an immediate incentive, comply because I don't want you guys to get in trouble, um, but then there's a larger, sort of more systemic reason for why compliance matters and it's because it's going to move all of these policy needs that we have from oh that's fringe and marginal those are criminals into mainstream small businesses asking for reasonable regulation so this really really is going to help a licensed regulated legal system creates the opportunity for good actors to participate and creates a much easier way for regulation of bad actors whereas a black market production system there's no transparency there's no guarantee that the medicine is clean. There's no guarantee that it's produced in a way that doesn't harm people or the environment. We've been providing medicine for the last 40 years under duress, under persecution, and it's really time that we got some credit for doing that and trying to do it the right way. And we really want to work with you guys. We really want to work with you guys, but we don't want to be at the other end of a point of a gun. Without the federal government acting and removing this absurdity of prohibition, we are going to continue to struggle with the black market for a long time. And I think it's incumbent upon the federal government to address it because they are single-handedly creating 
all of the ills within the industry with a federal prohibition. We're, we're talking a lot about medicine, but also from the hemp perspective, there's a million industrial uses for hemp that are being overlooked because of a federal prohibition on a plan. If you subtract racism, fear mongering, and lobbying from large corporations, we wouldn't have cannabis illegal, we wouldn't have hemp illegal. And, and now what's keeping it illegal, honestly, is big alcohol, big tobacco, big prisons, police lobbies, and pharmaceutical companies. So if you subtract the most powerful lobbies in the country from the issue, we have a fundamentally different conversation. And that's been one of the more frustrating things about regulation is that in seeking regulation, it's not an even playing field. We're sort of fighting for the best that we can get under the fact that there's all these interests already lined up. We have a, a tremendous need to be more actuated in the democratic process as a people. We have to advance it on all fronts. We have to work in the courts. We have to work in the regulators. We have to work with the legislature. We have to work in local policy arena. We have to work in the electoral arena. We have to be active everywhere in trying to move the conversation, social media, discussing it, getting cannabis people to come out of the closet and being able to share with their friends and families their cannabis use and the medicinal nature of it is a huge part of the conversation that has, you know, is evolving, is developing, but still remains with much work to be done.